Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this second lecture on amino acids. And this one is going to be all about the specific amino acids, whereas the last lecture was on general characteristics of amino acids. So I changed the name of the channel to something I thought was a little bit easier to say and spell. And I also had this logo design. So let me know what you think of it. Okay, so there's five groups of amino acids. Like I said in the last lecture, I don't want you to get too overwhelmed by this. We'll go through everything bit by bit and make it easy. There's five groups of amino acids, and they are grouped according to their R group. And the first group is nonpolar aliphatic R groups. And you may see them characterized as nonpolar or just aliphatic. And what that basically means is that it's just a bunch of carbons and hydrogens. The next group is aromatic R groups, and those are R groups that have ring structures. The third group is polar uncharged R groups, and this means that it has oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur, basically something in addition to just carbon and hydrogen. And then there's the positively charged R groups and the negatively charged R groups. In this slide, I'm going to list the amino acids in each group. Like I said in the last lecture, I don't want you to get too hung up on memorizing you know, which amino acids are in which group. Having said that though, I will provide a couple little memory aids just to make it a little easier. So nonpolar aliphatic R groups, you've got glycine, and we'll see later on that this is the only amino acid that is not chiral. There's alanine and valine, and I bolded these basically because they're the main ones that I'm gonna talk about in this group. In the aromatic group, there's phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. And the way I remember this is I think it's phenny when you trip on a tire or it's funny when you trip on a tire. And a tire is a ring shape. So tyrosine here is ring shaped. And then the polar uncharged R groups have serine, threonine, cysteine, which has disulfide bonds, proline, asparagine, and glutamine. On the positively charged R groups, there's lysine, arginine, and histidine. And for this one, I think basically the history of Argentina is a lie. And basically, is helping me remember that it's positively charged. Also, sometimes you'll see it labeled as basic, basic amino acids. And then the negatively charged amino acids include aspartate and glutamate. You may also see these labeled as aspartic acid or glutamic acid. And so there's two parts of the amino acid name that I'm using as a memory aid. There's eight and then ass and glute. And so I think I ate too much, my ass and glutes are too big, and can't fit into my genes, which is negative. And the negative here is associated with negatively charged. We're gonna take the first group here and we're gonna talk about common themes of these amino acids and then continue with the next couple groups. So pyruvate is used to make a lot of the nonpolar amino acids, specifically leucine, isoleucine, valine, and alanine. So the way I'm remembering this is liver pi or liver pi. And so pi or pyruvate is used to make L-I-V-A. So now we're gonna focus on alanine. And the R group for alanine is a methyl group, which is, I think of gas, methyl gas. And so I remember this by thinking alan has gas after eating liver pi, which remember pyruvate makes all these amino acids. So it's made from pyruvate. So here's the specific reaction, and don't get too hung up on this. It's pyruvate plus glutamate makes alanine plus alpha-ketoglutarate. So here's our alanine. Glycine. This is the only amino acid that is not chiral. Now we're going to do a little flashback to some previous lectures. Do you remember the bile salts and glycolic acid? Glycine plays a part in glycolic acid. So that's cholic acid plus glycine. That's from the lipids lecture. And then remember that collagen and elastin are approximately one third glycine. It's the most basic amino acid. It's R group is a hydrogen. So there's two hydrogens. So remember when you pick this molecule up and put it in front of a mirror, it can superimpose over itself. So it's not chiral. It's a precursor to creatine, purines, and porphyrin. So porphyrin rings like heme. So the way we're gonna remember this is glycine creates pure and so what you'll find with memory aids is the more crazy they are, the easier it is to remember it. And even more so, the more you visualize it in your head, the easier it is to remember it. So I want you to imagine in your head that you're in front of a mirror, you scoop up some glycine, you rub it all over your face because it's creating pure pores. Valine is kind of a troublemaker in that it causes sickle cell anemia. So on the hemoglobin beta chain, there's a substitution on the sixth amino acid from the N-terminal chain. And so we substitute glutamate for valine. 
here's a little picture of it. Here's the N terminus. And then the six amino acid from the N terminus, the G gets switched out for a V. V, very sick, G, good. So valine is, makes you very sick. And then leucine and valine are found in the interior of globular proteins, which we covered in the, in the membrane lecture. This is a plasma membrane here. These are the phospholipids. This is a protein. This is a globular protein, an integral protein, because it goes all the way through. And you see a high concentration of leucine and valine amino acids in these proteins. Methionine is, has a thioester group in the R group, and it's also encoded by the start codon, which is AUG. So it's often the first amino acid in most proteins because it's the start codon. And so the transfer RNA is going to see AUG as the start codon and bring methionine to the very first spot on most proteins. Okay, on to the aromatic R groups, which include phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. So remember, it's funny when you trip over a tire and tires are round. Phenylalanine is a precursor to tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine, epinephrine, and thyroid hormones. And remember last lecture, we talked about this exception, where phenylalanine is not an essential amino acid except in people with phenylketonuria. Tyrosine is synthesized from phenylalanine, converts to dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and thyroid hormones. And the conversion to dopamine is two steps. So we have tyrosine, and we don't just go right to dopamine, we make this thing called L-dopa, and then we go to dopa. Phenylalanine goes to tyrosine, goes to L-dopa, goes to dopa, goes to norepi, and then goes to epi. And so that's kind of the flow of synthesis. Okay, onto the polar uncharged, we're just gonna look at serine. We're gonna have a little flashback to the lipid lecture and the membrane lecture. So remember that there's two phospholipids that are more concentrated on the cytoplasmic face of the plasma membrane, and serine is in one of those. So there's phosphatidylserine and phosphatidylethanolamine. And the R group for serine has an OH group that often participates in enzyme reactions. So there's a class of proteases called serine proteases, which include major players that you've heard of called chymotrypsin and trypsin. So in the active site of these enzymes is a little serine, and the OH is just zapping the proteins, just cutting them up. So to remember this, we're going to think serine is not serine. It eats proteins. Okay, moving on to the negatively charged R groups, we've got aspartate and glutamate. And remember, we ate too much, so our ass and glutes are too big, and they can't fit into our genes. That's negative. These two are known for being neurotransmitters, so this is a, a question you get on the physiology side. So glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and we'll cover this more in our physiology lectures. And then GABA is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. So glutamate excites, GABA inhibits. And then aspartate is one of the two nitrogen sources in the urea cycle. It's going to donate a nitrogen. So the two sources of nitrogen for the urea cycle are aspartate, and carbamoyl phosphate. That's the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave any questions below. Keep watching, keep studying, keep up the good work.